As you venture westward, leaving behind the remnants of ancient ruins at the base of the cliff's edge, a distant yet unmistakable sound begins to permeate the air around you, the soothing, continuous drone of a waterfall. Drawing nearer, you find yourself standing before a sturdy stone bridge, its arches spanning the gap over which a cascading water flow. Crossing the bridge, you feel a gentle spray of the falls touch your skin, leaving a refreshing sensation in its wake. The rainbow can be seen dancing beams of light as the sun pierced through the mist. But your tranquil moment is abruptly interrupted as your eyes meet the figure waiting on the other side. A fellow planeswalker. Just like you, they stand ready for conflict. In the vast expanse of the multiverse, you both are formidable opponents, bound by fate to clash in this epic encounter. With resolve in your heart and determination in your soul, you prepare yourself for the inevitable battle that lies ahead, knowing that nothing will deter you from your ultimate quest. Welcome to a special presentation of Mystic Miniatures Forge. I am your host, Shinobi Mystic. By this time, you've probably seen my hands wiggling around on the screen. I wanted to make a video after seeing a Reddit post posted by HQ underscore Blumpkin 13 days ago. The post read, Heroescape plus projector equal heart eyes emojicon. So, seeing that post really made me remember about back in the year 2020 at the onset of the pandemic, one of the early games that I did with my wife where we used the projector layer on the set of Heroescape tiles. Back then, I didn't have as many tiles as I do today, uh, so the map wasn't as completed as it is here in the, um, in, in the final product. So the original video is titled Three Hour Living Battle Map, No Grid, Waterfall and Ruins Midday, posted by Tabletop Things on YouTube six years ago. And you don't really need the three hour loop. That's kind of ridiculously long. Um, this video could have been a lot shorter. If you ever download it, it takes up a lot of space on your hard drive. Um, he easily could have made that into a, a lot shorter of a loop. But I am just so thankful that they posted that beautiful map. And combined with the Heroscape tiles and a projector, the, um, the, obser the observable angle by like the end user, the person sitting there at the table, it is just absolutely astounding. And I must tell you, the Reddit post and even this video does not do it justice as to how lovely it looks. All right, so <laughs> my computer is kind of revolting at me right now. So here are some pictures that I took back on those days in March of 2020. Some cell phone videos of the early games of when I initially started this passion project of mine. Uh, I didn't have as many hexes, uh, hero escape terrain as I do today. But immediately, and I remember after posting this, my friends commenting like, "What? how did you do that? The, the water tiles, because they're you, they're they're translucent. The light can go through them. They just look absolutely astounding. You can just picture yourself, like the immersion uh, level of, of detail on this map with birds flying overhead. You can just picture yourself on a summer day actually being there. Now this uh, new map um, back to uh, current day. Uh, this is a, a terrain board that I developed. I call it the battle board. It's uh, 24 hexagon uh, pieces of Heroescape terrain, all glued together on a piece of plywood, primed uh, matte white, and you throw this down, and you can, and combined with the projector, it just instantly transforms into a battlefield. Um, what you do lose with this is it's still just a 2D flat playing field there is no real elevation like in the map you know you would get the sense of you know well, water spaces are always zero 
grass and anything else would be elevation of one. You can see the stone steps, you can see the rocks up above, but until you start stacking the Heroscape uh, terrain tiles on there, you don't get that real pop of the, the 3D. Um, until you really start to build out the map and then and, and, and put everything on there, then you get that real sense and, and it really starts to come together. That's when the heart eyes emoji starts to happen. But as far as a game with planeswalkers, where you traverse the blind eternities and you, you pop around or you know you go from mission to mission or quest to quest, to be able to throw this down, turn on the projector, bam, you're instantly somewhere. Um, if you then decide you want to planeswalk away, you can as well. Now, this is why uh, I wanted to highlight something. So I typically use this for my games, but for some reason, the alignment of the battle board does not necessarily equate to the alignment of the, the bridge hexagons. So it was funny because when I was setting this up, I'm like, what, what the heck? I, I can't make the bridge. Like, it, it won't lock in place. It's, it's not in the correct orientation for what I'm trying to accomplish here. So what I actually had to do was move away the battle board, throw down a blank terrain, a uh, blank map, you know, just flat uh, piece of wood, and then really build all the hexagons on top of there. So for some reason, the alignment, the orientation of the hexagons did not allow for this. So I'm going to sw swap that out. This is just the projector on the bottom. I've got some cups uh, to elevate the battlefield. Uh, sometimes you see people, they, they spend a lot of money on elevated uh, tabletop things. Just use some pillars. This is another kind of battle board that I made up with just uh, the hexagons painted on it instead of Heroscape tiles glued to it. But you can very quickly see that the hexagons don't necessarily line up to the orientation of what we were trying to accomplish. It just so that's the, the bridge edge piece, and you, you could just see that it just doesn't, doesn't work for what I was trying to accomplish here. And the other thing about having multiple game maps available is that you could see that, you know, I just pick one up. I mean, I could have all the terrain pieces pretty much on there, pick it up, store it somewhere in my room, and then pick up this other board and slap it right down, and then you're instantly somewhere else. So there is a lot of benefit to kind of having these pre-made maps already made up, kind of stored off to the side, and um, and yeah, you just pick them up, move them around. Like I said, I use the under underside for storage for dice, dice trays, miniatures, other map features. Um, you you have a lot of you just get extra room on the table um, between all the cards, the dice, the miniatures, everything else. You end up really wanting to kind of save your real estate for uh, for, for the, the game. Uh, I think I'm just grabbing the original map now. Uh, fortunately the audio kind of got messed up when I played the when I originally made this video so um, that's why I'm ha having to do the voiceover here. But this is the map that I made up with in the correct orientation and really I started at the bridge and I tried to build it out the bridge to make sure that would align up. Unfortunately, I think, you know, I was kind of rushing here, so when I turn the projector back on, it's a little off, but, you know, you've watched this video for close to nine minutes now. You definitely understand that, you know, this, this is how it works, and, and this is what I was trying to accomplish. So, yeah, this is what the uh, map looks like, you know. Um, you could use all kind of white terrain pieces and stack them on top. Like I think I have that to the north. You can see that's what I did for the hills. Um, with the, the, the hills or the, the rocks, they, the white really makes the, the gray nice and gray. You know, the, the white obviously reflects the visible light, so you'll capture the color. The, the green in the field, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like the, the green really pops. Um, you know, but it was also kind of nice to just turn off the turn off the projector, turn off the lights. Okay, this is what it looks like with nothing. 
So yeah, you, you could do it uh, either way. I mean, anything with the projector layer on it, uh, if it's white, it's going to reflect and, and, and look nice. Um, but I wanted to make use of these other tiles that I have. Um, I think you see some sand tiles. I think I'm taking a pictures for some Roll20 usage. And um, yeah, you can just see that, you know, the, the map is absolutely beautiful. So it's very neat. Uh, it's a really cool concept. I would advise anybody to kind of try to up their game. Now, I see a lot of uh, virtual tabletops uh, where they use a, a TV uh, mounted into the table and it shoots upward. Well, if you're stacking HeroScape terrain tiles on there, all you're doing is covering the TV. So for that, this kind of thing, it doesn't, doesn't work. The, you really have to have the projector shooting down and, and then you're, all of your figures and miniatures bathing in the light of the projector for this kind of illusion to work and and that's how it is uh is best accomplished so this is uh this is just one of many videos you will most likely see me using this technique and um i look forward to sharing more